How you doing guys? Welcome back, it's LSP. Uh, today is just going to be purely an educational video. Uh, it's not going to be analysis. I'm going to be discussing volume uh, of all things. So I, over the last sort of month, month and a half, you know, a lot of people have been reaching out, asking me about indicators, but predominantly about volume, you know. Um, and I've, you know, been kind of back and forth with quite a few people discussing VWAP, I've been talking about volume profiles, been talking about a lot of different styles of volume indicators um, and whether or not they're useful, can they be useful? Uh, and I want to say something before I get into any of this. And that is, I know traders who are, um, or at least who do use volume profiles and they're fantastic traders. Okay. I'm not saying that volume profiles don't work. I'm not saying that, you know, uh, VWAP doesn't work. I'm not saying that volume doesn't work. Right. The problem that I have, okay, and that I've always had. When I used to trade, and I'm just going to talk a little bit first before I go into the actual, you know, um, charts and, and kind of show a few things. But when I used to trade stocks, you know, I was predominantly a tape reader. So I would read level two, I would watch, you know, the time and sales, and I'd kind of really focus on that. And that's how I used to predominantly make my trading decisions and when I would add or when I would, you know, get out of my position and so on, when I would buy, sell. Um, because it was very um, telling over time as I became very familiar with the way that time in sales was, with the way that level two was, being able to see market makers and the way that they behaved over time and so on, especially predominantly on QCOM because that was the, the stock that I was trading consistently for years. Um, you, I became very familiar with how volume is, how I saw it, and how manipulated it is. Yeah, because volume is 100% manipulated and the, the figures that we are told and the way that the indicators show volume simply is not the volume that we think it is, right? And I want to explain something in a way that we will all understand, right? Volume absolutely 100% can be manipulated, right? We know this for a fact. If we just look at the cryptocurrency market, uh, and we'll take any smart contract. You can write a function in any smart contract, okay, to tell it to buy, for example, X amount on a particular, uh, or, you know, on a particular condition, right? So once that condition is met, it will buy said token. Now that's volume. If you say nothing to anybody and you just add that condition in the smart contract and nobody bothers to look for it, because obviously this is all public, right? But nobody bothers to look for it. Nobody sees it, you know, over a period of time. Eventually, somebody's going to find it, obviously. But the majority of people don't know Solidity. The majority of people aren't going to go looking into these smart contracts and whatnot. They're just going to trust that the audit was done. They're going to trust that everything's fine. They're going to trust it's just a function. That's, you know, it's not a big deal, whatever. Um, and once the function kicks in, it buys, off it goes. Even a buyback and burn is a manipulation of volume, really, when you think about it, right? We just don't know about it and we know what it does. Um, so we can never really know what the indicator is telling us. So the point of all of this, and the reason that I'm rambling just a little bit first before I get into you know the volume profile indicator, is to really emphasize one point, and that is never use any indicator solely on its own, okay? And then use the information that that's providing to make an investment or trading decision. This is the worst thing that you could possibly do. Always pair or use the indicator to complement what you already know and complement that with your methodology or your system or your strategy or whatever, yeah? It's just another tool that adds to the already existing methodology. So for example, myself, as you guys know, I am a you know language reader in terms of you know understanding the language of price, something I've developed over years and years and years and blah, 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 all the usual stuff. Um, so if I was to start using volume profiling, for example, then I would use it, you know, based on some of the things that I look for, and then I would look for volume profiling to complement what I'm doing and then confirm some of those ideas. But if it doesn't confirm those ideas, I will not trust it. I will err on what I'm doing and I will focus on what I already know works as opposed to you know, looking at volume profiling and saying, oh, well, but the volume profile says this, so I'm just going to trust the volume profile. So 
Let's go ahead and stick this on. And I'm sure um, some of you will be familiar with this, some of you won't. So I'm just going to quickly explain this. We're looking at the weekly chart of, um, of Bitcoin. Okay. And what you're seeing here is a representation of a few things, right? On the left hand side, we're seeing the, um, the yellow bars are the uh, uh, up volume. Okay. The blue bars are down volume. And then on the right hand side, this is buying or selling dominance. Okay. And then obviously the, 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 the bulk of the volume or the larger, okay, these areas, okay, is the more volume that is in that area. Okay, so obviously up here, it's, you know, very, very small, almost no volume. Whereas you can see here, this is a very large area of volume. So, you know, most of the volume is occurring around this area. This red line is called the point of control. So roughly around about 42,683, you know, based on this data range um, is the point of control. This is where pretty much most of the volume, you know, is, is occurring based on this data range, right? So, and at that time, it was mm, predominantly bearish, dominant at the time. So, you know, there's a lot of volume going on, some up volume, some down volume. Uh, but predominantly it was, you know, uh, bearish dominance, you know, during that time, right? So we can get a feel for, you know, down here, for example, we can see that, you know, price as it started to accelerate to the upside and really start to go, you know, all the way down here around about sort of 10,000, you know, that there was quite a lot of volume relative to this point, to this point, for example, if we just take, you know, this section right here, this area around about, sort of 10,000 is when, you know, volume really started to pick up. It was buy dominant, you know, so the, the it was bullish dominant. There's a lot of buying was occurring around about here. And you can see, obviously, that's, you know, in, indicative of the ensuing move after the fact. Uh, but ultimately, you know, we see what's going on. Now, the other thing I want to quickly say as well is that at the time when this was happening, yeah, take away all of this, okay, and let's just say we only were looking at price there at the time yeah the um uh, the volume profile wouldn't have looked anything like what it looks like now okay it would only take into account whatever's going on here right so you would not be able to use the volume profile based on the way we're looking at it now this is something that's so important because it's very easy to look at this right now and say oh yeah i would have bought there no you wouldn't because this volume profile would not look anything like this right this is really really important but it brings us to another very interesting point. How do we use this information now? Can we use this information now? Right now, price is currently around about 40,325, right? And we know that predominantly, okay, the point of control is roughly around about 42,500-ish, give or take, right? And we know that there's a lot of volume that, that occurs or that has been occurring around this level we can see that the volume profile is predominantly you know very very strong here that the volume is very very large here you know um in terms of mm, bullish or bearish dominance i'm just going to kind of air with i'll say i want to say bullish but i mean it's saying it's bullish but to be honest it's kind of i'm gonna i'm gonna say it's, it's a mixed bag right it's a bit of i'm gonna say it's neutral but we know there's a lot of volume that's occurring here so we can tie it in with some other things we can say okay are we in an area where price is likely to start to store for example is that you know it does our system say stop does our system say we're in an area of major support does our system say that you know we are you know looking for price to start to slow down you know is the fibonacci saying this are our moving averages saying that what's our macd saying what's our stochastic saying and so on and so on right obviously you know you know you guys know i don't use any of this stuff but obviously there are people that do and that do it well okay and because this is a indicator or volume you know based video i'm just kind of mentioning all of these things because I want to really emphasize that we're trying to decide how to use this information to make a better informed decision, okay, 
but to complement what we are already doing, okay? Not just use this solely to say, well, there's loads of volume here. There's a green bar over here that says it's bullish dominant. So I'm just going to go ahead and buy Bitcoin. You know, we can't do that, right? We, we just simply cannot do that. So let's drop down to the daily chart. Okay, and we get a, a little bit more of a feel for what's going on at this level. The point of control doesn't change that much. We can see roughly still around about 42,000, give or take. Okay, so prior it was around about 42,600. The point of control now is roughly around about 42,300. Okay, so it's roughly about the same. We know and we can see that there is a big bulk of volume happening in this area, right? So we know that the volume is quite large in this area. So again, great but how do we use this information to make a better informed decision all right in terms of timing for me personally right if i was going to try to use this volume profile right now in this moment you know to make a, a decision if i had to do something right now okay you've got no choice i've got to make a decision now in this video based solely on this volume profile and what I'm seeing on the chart, for example, I couldn't. I simply couldn't because we're in an area where, yes, most of the volume is occurring at 42,000, give or take. We can see that clearly. It's indicated in this volume profile. It's showing us everything that we need to know, except for one thing, the one thing that we really need. And this is where indicators, I think, really fall short, including volume, right? Confidence. Yeah, there is no indicator, okay, that is going to give you the confidence that you really need to pull the trigger when you really need to pull that trigger, okay? Some people will argue with what I've just said and say, actually, there is and this and that, but I truly believe that there isn't. The only thing that will give you the confidence to pull that trigger when you need to pull that trigger and have confidence and really know, yes, I'm going to do it and be sure and confident in your decision is experience. That's it. Experience in the market, putting all of these things together. It isn't the indicators. It's not the volume indicator. It's not the volume profile. It's not the stack, you know, the stochastics, the MACD, and all of this good stuff or the moving averages. It's the experience and understanding from being in the markets and taking your lumps, right? So again, if we just go back up to the weekly for a second. We can see that the volume profile is telling us something, right? We know deep down that volume is manipulated. We know that no matter what we say, we're never really going to get a true representation, okay, on the surface of it anyway, at least, of what is really going on. I know from a mathematical point of view, if we really break it down and we had the time or, you know, maybe built some system to take every single transaction that is happening on the blockchain and work out, you know, the exact numbers, you know, yes, fine, we could do that. But to just sit down as, a, as an average retail trader or a retail investor that's just looking to, you know, pick up a bit of Bitcoin, you know, um, and then just using some of these tools, you know, you know, at your disposal, um, it's not always easy to just say, yep, point of control, the bulk of volumes happening here, I'm just going to pull the trigger and off I go, right? So I hope the video has helped in some way. You know, if we go down, um, or at least I hope the video is helping in some way, because I haven't quite finished yet. Um, but I, I hope, you know, that you, you I, I hope at least that you're starting to see that it's not always cut and shut. That, that's the main thing that I'm trying to kind of get across in this video that it isn't always cut and shut. Like I said, I know there are people out there that use volume profiles or other types of volume you know, indicators. Like I said, I know traders who use volume profiles very, very well, right? Uh, and there are different types of volume profiles. I mean, there's hundreds of indicators. Um, <laughs> let me show you. You know, if I just type in volume with a space um, and I just do this, I mean, it, the list, guys, is endless. I mean, it just keeps going and going and going, you know, and going and all of these, you know, volume, 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 volume. I mean, I'm going to stop because it just keeps going. But, um, you know, 
there are there are tons and tons and tons of volume indicators, and the question is, we know they all don't work. Come on, let's be let's be frank. Let's just say there's three hundred volume indicators. There's no way that all of those indicators work. Not a chance, right? Statistically, it just doesn't make sense. So, it's about something else. Yeah, well, this we can all agree on. It's about something else. It's about understanding a lot of other things. You know, macroeconomics, fundamentals, and so on. You know, um, a lot of things that you, you know, you hear me, you know, uh, not talking about, you know, but ultimately using these tools at our disposal, you know, um, are, you know, something that has to be paired with something that you already know. Now, you'll notice we've dropped down to the four hour chart just to quickly go through something before I wrap up the video, because I want to bring your attention to something else. That the point of control, we can see that the point of control, most of the volume is happening right here, roughly around about 38,000. 800 ish, right? So we've dropped a bit. This is related to time, okay? And this is really, really important to understand when you're using any indicator, especially volume indicators, right? Because when you drop down time frames and you notice that things like this start to happen, now we're up at 46,000 you know, and the volume indicator is, is, is kind of really out of whack, right, in terms of what we've, what we've been seeing. When we see things like this, you, you, you absolutely have to remember that and factor in time, okay, as the variable, okay, and really shorten down how much trust you put in what you're seeing and how much time you allow for this to unfold. Now, let me really emphasize what I'm saying. On the weekly chart, for example, if I was to buy Bitcoin after a move down like this, okay, and then buy around here, I know I've got two things going for me and I've got two things to my advantage. It's come from an all-time high and it's corrected pretty aggressively, you know, a good chunk of the way, okay, and I'm grabbing Bitcoin number two in an area where he's a lot of volume and it's where the most volume is happening. This is what this volume profile is telling me. So I, I would be more comfortable at least buying Bitcoin around about here, for example. And I would know and have more confidence doing that on the weekly chart because it's the weekly and it takes a long time for this stuff to form, right? Whereas if I drop down to say the four hour chart and I see that now, Predominantly 38,000, you know, this is where most of the volume is happening. Uh, the, the bearish dominance or bullish dominance, I wouldn't even take into consideration. But I would be less inclined to trust this as much because if I was to take, say, a buy down here, for example, I would only do it based on the weekly, knowing that the weekly is there and it's predominantly around about this area where most of that volume is accumulating and so on. But I wouldn't look to the four hour to get out, for example. And if I did, it would just be a trade. So let's say I was in on the four hour and it started to go up a little bit. I'd be out, say, at 42,000 for argument's sake. Because the four hour would be more prone to going up and down and all over the place and kind of whipsawing around. Whereas the weekly is just going to do its thing and it's going to take a very long time to form. And I'm more likely to get that much longer drawn out monthly you know, or two month or three month or four month move. Whereas the hourly, I might, I'll be lucky if I get, sorry, four hour, I'll be lucky if I get maybe, you know, three, four up to a week, you know, uh, movement, right? Uh, hourly, even worse. So when I look at this, I would be more inclined to just either one, leave it alone or two, if I was going to do anything with this, I'd just say, look, I'm not doing anything, you know, unless it's in a predominantly um, uh, high volume area, like this, this, or this. So these three areas where I know there's you know pretty much quite a lot of volume going on, but then I'd pair it together with areas where I can see something happening that makes a lot of sense. I'd increase the range so it would factor a lot more in and kind of really sort of even this out a little bit. Um, and then I would pair that together with higher time frame levels and so on and so on. But again, you know, uh, as soon as I finish this video, I mean, I'm in fact I'm going to do it now. There you go. Uh, I'm taking it off my chart because I, I just don't need it, obviously. Um, but, you know, for me, you know, I wanted to, or, or for you guys, sorry, I wanted to, you know, kind of pop on, do a little bit of a video on something a little bit different, 
uh, answer some of the questions that people have been asking me in terms of volume um, uh, and you know predominantly volume profile and, and sort of v, VWAP. I didn't go into VWAP. Um, it can be useful. It's very it's very similar to Bollinger Bands, but you know it's, it's weighted slightly differently. Um, but again, you know it's not not something that you know it's for me anyway. It's not even worth going into. It can be used. It is useful, but again, it's just not really my thing. But the talk on volume. I feel is very important, you know, and some of the things that I said, I, I, I think, and I hope, um, make a lot of sense. I hope they, um, they help in some way as always. Um, and if there's anything that you guys want me to discuss, except for MACD and stochastics and RSI, please, please. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, if, if you want me to, I will, but, um, yeah, you know, if there's anything that you guys want me to go through or discuss or, you know, anything that you're having issues with or even if you're just curious about, um, just hop into my Discord. The link's in the description below um, and I'm quite happy to just kind of jump on and, and go through it for you, stick it in a video, uh, throw it up on YouTube. And with that said, I hope everyone's having a fantastic day or, or evening and I look forward to speaking to you in the next episode. All the best, guys. Take care.